Taylor Sheridan has done it again. Seriously, what is it with this guy? Everything he touches turns to gold. The first season of Tulsa King is out and is taking over as one of the most compelling new shows in the streaming wars going on today. How has Sheridan been able to have so much success? What makes Tulsa King so good? And has Sylvester Stallone lost his edge? Well, strap in, dear viewer. I'll be going over those questions and much more in this review. If you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on all new reviews I put out weekly here at Off The Cover. And without further ado, on to the video. Many people have been looking for a Sopranos killing show, which has been difficult to top, but Tulsa King may be a viable contender. Sylvester Stallone headlines the project with a towering central performance. He plays Dwight Manfredi, who has just been released from prison after 25 years in the joint and must start from scratch in a foreign city to his native New York. To Manfredi, it might as well be Siberia, a common theme in the conversations between the characters. The emphasis in the storytelling is on an attempt to use Stallone's screen presence and macho man image to sugarcoat the underlying theme of redeeming oneself by getting back on their feet. Taylor Sheridan's experience and honesty make watching season one of Tulsa King a treat for viewers. Fan of the mafia genre will definitely appreciate the revitalized mafia essentials and a rustic charm only found in such portrayals. Adding to the rustic charm of mob movies and shows is the even more rustic charm of the West. Man Freddy seems to have a knack for making friends anywhere he goes. That's part of his charm, and it's why casting Sylvester Stallone was a stroke of genius. From the moment he steps off the plane in Tulsa, he has immediate rapport with his cab driver Tyson, played by the very charming Jay Will. Man Freddy's interactions with the other patrons at the local dive bar, the Bread Two Buck, are charismatic and lighthearted. Very quickly, he is able to set up his business, but not all is as it seems in this show. He draws the attraction of an ATF agent, Stacy Beale, played by Andrea Savage. His relationship with Beale is tumultuous as they are both unaware of each other's past when they first meet. As more is revealed, we see their relationship get more contentious, even leading to a massive cliffhanger at the end of the season. Man Freddy's business doesn't just draw the ire of the FBI and the ATF, but also a local biker gang. Here we see some of Sheridan's experience from the show Sons of Anarchy come to full fruition. He develops this story thread quite well as he shows local law enforcement corruption as well, no doubt inspired by his time on Sons of Anarchy. All this provides for some edge of your seat tension that make mafia movies and shows so compelling. The supporting characters provide a little levity in an otherwise tense mob drama. Dwight's interactions with Bodie, played by Martin Starr, are some of the most hilarious since Uncle Polly from The Sopranos. Perhaps the best character development we see in the show is the evolution of Dwight's relationship with Tyson. At first, they wisecrack off each other, but by the end of the season, Dwight takes on more of a guiding, perhaps fatherish figure to Tyson. That's not to say that Tyson's parents are uncaring. Quite on the contrary, Tyson's father, played by Michael Beach, is stellar. Another standout performance is by Max Casella, who plays Armand, another mobster who has been hiding out in Tulsa for nearly as long as Dwight had been in prison. Even at the age of 76, Stallone commands a considerable physical presence in every scene he's in. He's quickly able to win the loyalty of an eclectic group of characters with fierce allegiance to his brains, courage, and good-heartedness. Dwight is a straight shooter, and Stallone keeps that part of his identity intact. Stallone's biggest achievement, and perhaps Sheridan's as well, is making Dwight someone who we can root for no matter what he did in the past, which is nothing too morally outrageous as we later find out. He's written as the fairy tale type of gangster whose moral high handedness stems from his ego of being a man at all times. This is something that's been largely missing from television and movies during the dark ages of cinema. 
Stallone carries the same spirit that he miraculously conjured as Rocky Balboa in the first Rocky movie, and even gets to land a few punches throughout the season. The most enduring aspect about Tulsa King is its simplicity. The plotline is fairly straightforward, even when the stakes are high and low. In fact, we don't really get a formidable antagonist until the middle of the season in Kalen, the leader of the local biker gang. Before that, Dwight's enemies are that of the technologically enabled world and his aching loneliness and regret. Overall, Tulsa King never gets bogged down by complicated details. Every avenue, character, and story point seamlessly becomes part of the whole narrative. Dwight remains at the forefront from all perspectives. This is a return to true form for the anti-hero show and set in the neo-western genre for which Taylor Sheridan is largely known. Even those from different generations can easily enjoy the show and relish in seeing the big man return to his acting best. The show never becomes bogged down in fourth wave feminism, which has deconstructed and destroyed so many great male characters. This is part of its charm, and why this show is resonating with audiences across the board. A second season has been confirmed, and Paramount definitely has a winner on its hands. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more great content.